Hello students. Today's online lecture is on the topic male reproductive physiology. As I have already discussed about the functional anatomy of testis in my previous lecture, therefore in this lecture I will directly cover the topics that is functions of the testis which will include spermatogenesis and the endocrine functions of the testis and its regulation. Let us now discuss in depth about the functions of testis. Testis serves two major functions in human males, namely gametogenesis or spermatogenesis to be more precise and endocrine functions. Now let's see first the physiology of spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis refers to the process of formation of spermatozoa from the primitive germ cells that is spermatogonia. Spermatogenesis have some characteristics which are important to be known. Spermatogenesis begins at puberty and it continues throughout the adult life. However, it declines in the old age. Each spermatogonium can develop into 512 spermatids. It takes about an average of 74 days to form a mature sperm from a germ cell. The spermatozoa are non-motile in the seminiferous tubules. These non-motile sperms become motile, mature and acquire the ability to fertilize an ovum when they pass through the female genital tract after ejaculation. This process is called as capacitation. Spermatogenesis has got different phases. The first phase of spermatogenesis is the phase of mitotic division of the spermatogonia. During this phase, a single spermatogonia divides by mitosis till it forms 32 spermatogonias. The division occurs in the basal compartment of the seminiferous tubules. Now, the second phase starts from here. The second phase of spermatogenesis includes the formation of primary spermatocytes. After 32 spermatogonia are formed, they again undergo cell division mitotically to form 64 primary spermatocytes. The primary spermatocytes are large cells having diploid number of chromosomes that is 44XY. The third phase of spermatogenesis is formation of secondary spermatocytes. In this phase, each primary spermatocyte undergoes two meiotic divisions. After first meiotic division, the 64 primary spermatocytes become 128 primary spermatocytes with diploid number of chromosomes that is 44XY. After second meiotic division, these 128 primary spermatocytes form 256 secondary spermatocytes that have half the number of chromosomes that is 50% will have 22X and 50% of them will have 22Y chromosomes. The fourth phase of spermatogenesis is formation of spermatids by mitosis. Here each secondary spermatocyte will divide mitotically to form two spermatids. Thus in total 512 spermatids are formed from a single spermatogonium. The fifth and last phase of spermatogenesis includes the formation of spermatozoa. The process is also called as spermiogenesis. The spermatids do not divide further in this phase but undergo some morphological changes like in the shape and orientation of its organelles etc. to form spermatozoa or sperms. These changes occur in the deep folds of the cytoplasm of the Sertoli cells. Now let us see the structure of a spermatozoon. Spermatozoon is the singular form of spermatozoa. A fully formed spermatozoon is about 55 to 65 micrometer in length. It comprises of a head, a neck and a tail part. The head of spermatozoon is about 4 to 5 micrometer long and is flattened from anterior to posterior. It is surrounded by a part called as acrosome. Acrosome is a thick cap-like structure that covers the anterior two-third part of the head. 
It contains a number of enzymes namely hyaluronidase, proteolytic enzymes and phosphatases that help the sperm to penetrate ovum during fertilization. Next is the neck. The neck is a narrow constricted part that contains a funnel shaped basal body and a centriole. The tail of the sperm is the motile portion and is also called as flagellum which can be divided into three parts, a middle, principal and an end piece. The rate of formation of sperms is about 120 million sperms per day. That is an extremely high rate. A small quantity of them are stored in the epididymis portion of the testis, but most of them are stored in the vas deferens. Epididymis plays an important role in the maturation of sperms after they are released from the seminiferous tubules. Sperms acquire some motility only after passing through the epididymis. Secretions of seminal vesicles and prostate gland too have a st stimulatory effect on sperm motility. But sperms become fully mature and motile only after ejaculation by the process of capacitation. Next topic is semen and its characteristics. Semen or the seminal fluid refers to the fluid that is ejaculated during the climax at the time of male sexual act. The average volume of semen per ejaculation is 2.5 to 3.5 ml only after an abstinence of two days. It appears milky due to the presence of white prostatic secretion. It has specific gravity of 1.028 and it is alkaline in nature with a pH of 7.5. This alkalinity of semen helps to neutralize the acidic pH of the vagina. Semen is in liquid form when freshly ejaculated, then it coagulates in vitro or inside vagina and finally undergoes secondary liquefaction after about 15 to 30 minutes. Semen comprises of various components. These are spermatozoa. The no normal sperm count varies from 35 to 200 million sperms per ml of semen. The average is taken as 100 million sperms per ml. It is interesting to be noted that the sperm count tends to increase in winter season when compared to the summers because of the fact that spermatogenesis occurs best at lower temperatures that is around 32 degrees Celsius. Semen also contains secretions of seminal vesicles which contributes about 60% of the semen volume. This secretion is rich in fructose, phosphorylcholine, vitamin C, prostaglandins and fibrinogen. Semen contains the secretions of prostate gland too. This secretion gives the semen is milky color and is rich in citric acid, cholesterol, zinc, phosphate, fibrinolysin, etc. Semen also contains little secretion from the bulbourethral glands. Now let us see the endocrine functions performed by the testis. The endocrine functions of the testis are mainly performed by two types of cells found in them namely Leydig cells and Sertoli cells. The Leydig cells produce the male sex hormones called as androgens. The major androgen is testosterone while the Sertoli cells secrete estrogen, inhibin and activin hormones in small amounts. Apart from testosterone, there are other androgens which are secreted by the testis and they are androstenedione and dihydrotestosterone. Testosterone is the most important testicular hormone. Since the Leydig cells appear soon in the intrauterine life, therefore testosterone is secreted by these cells during the intrauterine life and infancy and later after the onset of puberty. The secretion of testosterone decreases after 40 years of age and becomes almost nil at old age. A normal man secretes about 4 to 9 mg of testosterone per day of which about greater than 98% of testosterone is bound to plasma proteins like albumin and testosterone binding globulin TBG. Thus a very small fraction of unbound 
टेस्टेस्टेरॉन इज फिजियोलॉजिकली एक्टिव दैट एक्सर्ट इट्स इफेक्ट ऑन द टारगेट सेल्स नेक्स्ट एंड्रोजन इज एंड्रोस्टेनिडियॉन इट इज अ प्रीकर्सर फॉर ईस्ट्रोजन इन मेन The next important androgen after testosterone is dihydrotestosterone. DHT or dihydrotestosterone has got greater than twice the biological activity of testosterone. Only 20% of plasma DHT is formed in testes by the action of enzyme 5 alpha reductase on testosterone, while 80% of DHT is derived from the peripheral conversion of testosterone. next is functions of androgens all the functions of androgens that is testosterone and dihydrotestosterone can be categorized under three headings firstly functions of androgens in utero second functions of androgens at the onset of puberty and third functions of androgen during adult life first see the functions of testosterone and dihydrotestosterone during the fetal life testosterone is secreted by the fetal testes at about second to fourth month of intrauterine life during that time it performs the following functions testosterone carries out the task of gonadal sex differentiation and genital differentiation Testosterone causes the descent of the testes from the abdominal cavity into the scrotum just before birth. During the time period of puberty, testosterone and dihydrotestosterone causes pubertal enlargement of the penis. The scrotum increases in size and becomes pigmented and the rugal folds appear. Testosterone and DHT also causes enlargement of the seminal vesicles and growth of prostate gland. Androgens cause all the development of male secondary sexual characters like appearance of typical male body hair pattern including the beard and pubic hairs. The voice becomes deeper and low pitched, the muscle mass is highly increased, changes in the skin causing it more thick and acne prone during puberty androgens augment the psychological differentiation too that is under the influence of androgens male develops the psyche of a man testosterone increases the libido and causes sexual drive and erectile functions testosterone is responsible for producing aggressive and risk taking behavior in male and also interest in opposite sex Testosterone causes accelerated growth of the body especially of the skeletal muscles this is called as pubertal growth spurt During adulthood too androgens perform the similar functions like they are responsible for the male pattern hair growth and psyche they prevent bone loss and osteoporosis they maintain spermatogenesis and also stimulates erythropoiesis they increase plasma levels of ldl cholesterol and decrease hdl cholesterol and regulate the gonadotropin secretions next topic is control of testicular functions two main functions of testes namely spermatogenesis and secretion of testosterone are controlled by the hypothalamic hypophyseal testicular axis this axis is simply the interactions between the hypothalamus of brain the pituitary gland and the testes testosterone hormone secretion is controlled in the intrauterine life by the interactions of leydig cells with testosterone while in adulthood the hypothalamic hypophyseal testicular axis is responsible for the control of secretion of testosterone this axis works by two ways stimulatory control and inhibitory control under the influence of stimulatory control the hypothalamus produces gonadotropin releasing hormones gnrh that stimulates the anterior pituitary to secrete two hormones fsh and lh fsh is follicle stimulating hormone and lh is luteinizing hormone 
the anterior pituitary controls the secretion of testosterone mainly through luteinizing hormone the leydig cells which are present in the testes they have receptors for the luteinizing hormone therefore this lh which is secreted by the anterior pituitary it binds with the receptors of the lh cells that is uh, lh receptors of the leydig cells and it triggers the synthesis and secretion of testosterone now what under the negative feedback control what happens the plasma testosterone level is maintained at a constant level by this feedback control mechanism which is exerted by the hormone testosterone and estradiol here the testosterone exerts its negative feedback effects mainly on the opiodergic cells or neurons present in the brain that is hypothalamus and estradiol exerts its negative feedback effect on the anterior pituitary and also on the hypothalamus thus the net effect is that whenever there is increase in the plasma level of testosterone it will negatively stimulate the hypothalamus to secrete less gnrh and thus less testosterone is produced this completes the male reproductive system in the next lecture i will start the female reproductive system thank you